We'll start one minute early. Thank you all for being here. My name is Dennis Britton. I'm on the board of the Signal Multimedia Company, and I've been asked to be the moderator today. I have a journalism background. I was the editor-in-chief of the Chicago Sun-Times, the editor of the Denver Post, and for a quarter of a century I worked for the Los Angeles Times. I was the Washington editor during Watergate. I was the international editor, the business uh, and economics editor. But I have a, also a history here. We've heard some concerns that there, the new ownership uh, isn't from here. And that's almost literally the truth. Russ Riley has been here for 30 years. Chuck's lived over the mountain most of his life. And for me, uh, my great uncle, Francisco Lopez, was here. And Francisco, one afternoon, was sitting up against a oak tree in Plasterita Canyon. And he was going to fix his lunch. So he reached over and pulled out some wild onions. And the bottom of Uncle Francisco's wild onions were gold nuggets. So gold was discovered here by my uncle. The other, and that was in 1842. The other connection is my great-grandfather, Hieronimo Lopez, and his wife, Catalina, have the famous Lopez Adobe in the town of San Fernando, which was an overlay, overland stage stop when he did it. Uh, my great-grandfather started the first uh, elementary school in the San Fernando Valley. And my connection with it he started the first newspaper in San Fernando. It was called the San Fernando Times. I told them that they should have sued that people, Chandler's for stealing the name, but it, it, they didn't care. One housekeeping thing, uh, the restrooms, there's a white arrow in the back of the room. The ladies use the geraniums on the right. No, just follow the arrows. I don't know exactly where they go, but that's where the arrows are. So welcome. Our candidates are sitting in alphabetical order, and they will, we will begin in an alphabetical order, and we will end in a reverse alphabetical order. i to put this down just a bit. Here's the format. It's a 90-minute uh, debate or discussion. Each candidate will be allowed three minutes to make an opening statement. Then the questioners will take over. All candidates will answer each question, and the questioner or the moderator will be allowed to, a quick follow-up question uh, to one or all, and you will have one minute to answer each question. Now, one minute isn't a whole lot, so maybe you want to give highlights in your one-minute answer, but I will stop you in one minute unless you're saying something that is just so devastatingly interesting that we have to go on. <laughs> You know that probably won't happen. <laughs> I can get seated right there, and he will give you the, the signals for 30 seconds left, 10 seconds left, and then the stop signal. At the end of the program, each candidate will be allowed three minutes to make a closing statement or anything you want to say. Uh, if there's something that has not been addressed during the session, feel free to use the three minutes for that. Uh, we'll give you the time. Our intention, however, is to end exactly on time at 7.30. Candidates have any questions? All right. I'd like to introduce uh, our panel. Jason Schaff is the Vice President and Editor of The Signal. He's been here a long time. Many of you know him. He's a, a veteran journalist. He is committed to the Santa Clarita Valley. He's committed to making a difference. Uh, and we're very proud that, that he is doing it. Next to him is Krista Daly. She is the government and politics reporter. She is new here. She lives here. Uh, introduce yourself to her. 
Uh, she'd love your help in, in becoming uh, as knowledgeable about governments and politics that you can. And next to her is the editor of one of the best publications in Southern California, the Santa Clarita Business Journal. If you're not getting it, get it. It is one of the best publications I have seen of this kind in the country, and I've seen a lot of them. And Jenna Atkins is its editor. They will be asking the questions. We will start with Jason. What specifically will you do to make sure that Semex Mine does not operate in Santa Cruz? Okay, not hear that? Opening. Opening state. Oh, it's my fault. Thank you very much. Let's do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, panelists. Thank you to the signal for putting this together. Can Hello, can you hear this? Can you hear this? Do we have help with the microphones? <laughs> testing. 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 Try uh, Steve. Testing. I'll go all the time. Signal for putting this event on. Uh, my name is Brian Forio, and these events are wonderful as they give uh, the public an opportunity to hear from the candidates and see whose values best align with you as you head in to make an informed decision in June and November. I'm a Southern California native, born and raised. Both of my parents are public school teachers. They're actually here today. Thank you for coming up. Uh, Jim and Judy Caforio. My mom was a special education teacher in third and fourth grade. Uh, my dad was a high school English teacher. And they taught me at a very young age the value of hard work and the benefit of good public education. So it was ingrained in me at a very early age how important it is, how critical it is that we fully fund public education to make sure that all of our children have an opportunity to get ahead. So I put those two things together, hard work and good public schools, and was able to attend UCLA where I studied international relations, geography, and environmental studies. And most importantly, met my wife Lisa, who is in the back over here, uh, on the UCLA mock trial team. That was more than 10 years ago, and just last night we celebrated our third wedding anniversary uh, with a great dinner at The Social right down the street. Thank you so much for being an amazing partner. Uh, it's been a fabulous three years, and I look forward to uh, what the future has in store as we continue building our life in Santa Clarita. Uh, after UCLA, I went to Yale Law School. I then worked for a United States federal judge, and I came back to Southern California, where I practiced as an attorney, taking on some of the biggest banks and the wealthiest corporations in the world. And what I saw on an almost daily basis is how hard-working American families were being taken advantage of because career politicians in Washington were stacking the deck against them. And so Lisa and I sat back and said, let's not do this on a case-by-case -case basis. Let's not do this one client at a time. Let's try to build a better system. Let's fight for an economy that works for everyone and not just the wealthy few. That means increasing the minimum wage because no person should work a full-time job and live in poverty. It means once and for all ending wage discrimination. Because when I sit there and think of my 14-year-old niece son, and the fact that in a few years, some boss of hers might think it's okay to pay her less than a guy doing the same job simply because she's a young woman, that's wrong. And I'm gonna fight every day in Congress to make sure it doesn't happen. And it means strengthening and securing Social Security and Medicare so that we fulfill the sacred promise for our seniors. Thank you for your time. I look forward to a robust debate. Well, thank you. Thank you to the signal, and thank you for everyone coming out and uh, being part of this forum. It has been my pleasure and my honor to be the representative for months. Before that, I was your representative at the State House as your senator for two years. Before that, I was a 
an assemblyman for four years for the 36th Assembly District, which encompassed, encompassed the Baker Valley and the Yellow Valley. I've also been a Palmdale City Councilman, and I think the breadth of that knowledge is something that I take forward in all of the problems that I work with. But well, my career was in law enforcement. I served the Los Angeles Police Department for 18 years. I went to five different divisions and, set, and served in several different capacities on the LAPD. I married my beautiful wife here in the audience for 27 years this October. Uh, there's no one that I'm more impressed with than my wife. There's no one I love more than my wife. She is a NICU nurse, and she takes care of premature babies on a almost daily basis. We have two boys. One is graduating from Sacramento State. I was working with him on his final report last night. I hope he gets an A, because if he doesn't, I'm sure he'll blame me a little bit. <laughs> and then my youngest son is graduating from Ports Hill High School on June 2nd, and it will be my honor to speak at his graduation. There are big, big problems that are happening in the world, and big, big solutions need to happen. What's happening right now? Look, we looked at the news today. Donald Trump is now looks like maybe the pre presumptive nominee for the Republican Party. We don't know that yet. And I haven't endorsed. I haven't endorsed in nine months. I, I won't endorse today. But I think that these types of issues are coming out on a daily basis. Big problems. Social Security, Medicare, payment on the debt. If we do not, if we do not work on these problems right now, these are country failing issues. So we need someone with a city, through the state, and through the federal level, because these issues are not just federal levels. They are connected. And someone who has that kind of knowledge really understands how to make these problems go away and how to cure some of these, these issues. So I thank you very much. I look forward to a robust debate. My day job is I'm a lieutenant with the Los Angeles Police Department. I've done that for 21 years. Uh, I have worked in the Los Angeles Police Department and tackled many different problems. In fact, I'm trained to run towards problems, not away from them. And every day I see problems, not just in the 25th, but nationwide, that are going to require bold and progressive solutions. I'm a veteran, a elected member of the Ottawa State Town Council, and as a police lieutenant, I know that I know that people, when we work together, that the results can be attained for the good of everyone and not just a select few. Uh, a few background facts about myself. I'm a native of California. I live in Abu Dhabi, where I'm, I've been elected to the town council three times. Uh, my wife and I have four kids, uh, ages 6, 8, 10, and 11. Two of those kids we adopted through Los Angeles County DCFS, because we know that children need strong guidance and support to be successful. So children will be a strong focus of my tenure as a representative. Uh, on a more national level, some of the things that I'm very concerned about are uh, expanding and protecting Social Security and Medicare, uh, finding educational and job opportunities for our veterans returning from war, increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Uh, like uh, Mr. Toro said, there's no reason people should work full time and not be able to make ends meet and have struggles every, every day. And I see that on the streets of Los Angeles, so I've got first-hand knowledge of that. Uh, locally, We've got a, I bet there's going to be a question tonight about CMEX. Well, we've got to stop CMEX. <laughs> wow, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> no, on that one. We've got to do something about finally getting the uh, Santa Susana Field Lab cleaned up to background radiation levels. We've got to stop the expansion of the Chiquita Canyon landfill. For those of you that don't know, that's going to be the largest landfill in the United States right in your backyard. So really what I want to tell you tonight is that I'm, I'm here to run for something that not run against anyone. I'm here to run for my family, and I'm here to run for your family, and represent them, represent them in Washington. So I look forward to a great debate tonight. Thank you. Each candidate will answer each question. Uh, I will not bother to reintroduce this wonderful panel of experts, <laughs> but I have a suggestion. Why don't you ask a question about CMS? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What specifically will you do to make sure the CMEX mine does not operate ever in the Santa Cruz Valley? 
Thank you for the question. Uh, keeping CMEX closed or never open is of critical importance in this community. There are a few things we need to do. Uh, first, uh, we hope to be successful uh, through the legal process, which is happening right now uh, as CMEX appeals it through the agency and then will likely take it into the courts. And we need to make sure that we have a representative who understands the legal system, understands the legal arguments, and be successful in that avenue. Then we need to bring in legislation that will forever prevent CMEX from opening a mine here in this community. That's why I'm proud to be endorsed by Brad Sherman and Judy Chu, the other members of Congress who are working on this issue, and recognize that I'm the best partner to work with to ensure that we never have that open mind here. Thank you. Steve? Well, obviously, uh, when we're sitting somewhere close to this about uh, two years ago, when all eight candidates, including the Republicans, the Democrats, and the Libertarians, said this is the number one issue, mm -hmm. that making sure that CMEX would never come to fruition. Uh, as your senator in 2013, I sent out a letter to Senator Boxer and Senator Feinstein who started the ball rolling. When I became your representative, I sat down with the city council just like I did as, as the senator. And I said, you know what, for 18 years, this is institutional knowledge that, that people should know, for 18 years we have tried to do things against CMEX, including legislation, several times. It has failed several times. So we sat down and we hammered out good real solutions. On August 28th, the BLM had reversed 180 degrees, nullified their contracts because of what we had done. We had built that coalition and we had moved it forward. Legislation is not always the answer and for 18 years we knew that out here. Thank you. Lou? Specifically to stop the uh, CMEX mine, I'm, I'm totally against it. I'm the only person that lives close to it that's up on this uh, on the stage right now, I live about two miles from it. My kids go to school right down the street from it. Uh, I've been on the Agudose Town Council, and I know we say CMEX is in Santa Cruz, but let's face it, that's Agudose uh, where it is. So I've been working on this for some time in a bipartisan manner with the city of Santa Cruz, with Agudose, with the supervisor's office, and I think the same thing is going to happen when I go to Congress. I'm going to work on bipartisan legislation that gets this finally put for 18 years. I think. It's taking way too long, and, and the last thing we need is uh, more attorneys working on this. We need real people coming up with real solutions, reaching some compromise, and getting it done before we all have to go out there and help together. And I will do that as your congressman. Thank you. We'll now move to Krista. What specific things will you do to address the Thank you for that question. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done uh, in this community. Uh, we have a lot of issues that are facing us, but the first thing we need to do is make sure we're building that economy that works for everyone by investing in infrastructure here in the community so that we are creating jobs here in the community, not just while we're uh, having the project in place, while we're bringing high-speed broadband internet, while we're making sure the 14 moves quickly and efficiently and that two inches of rain don't uh, shut down all the roads because of a mudslide, but also because we're going to be able to continue having jobs in the area when we improve the infrastructure, when we make this a positive place for businesses to come, when we're investing in uh, STEM in vocational training, in community colleges, to make sure that we continue to have the best students to work in all of the businesses in the area. Thank you. Steve? Well, it's going to take a lot more than one minute to answer this question, but I'll do my best. But the very first thing we did was when we were elected, we looked at the committees that would help this district. The very first committee we lobbied for was Armed Services. The second was Science, Space, and Technology, and then we went to Small Business. If you go around this district from Simi Valley to Antelope Valley, you're going to find hundreds, if not thousands, of entrepreneurs and small businesses. So our very first bill was for small businesses. We put a joint venturing act together. It was pushed through Congress and signed by President Obama. No, no votes. It allowed small businesses to join together, act as a large business for federal grants. This is the first time this has ever happened. Everyone said this was a, the right way to go about small businesses. And so now we have pushed forward with a mentor protege program that is being pushed through Congress. These are the types of issues that, if you're working on small business, affect small business. 
Lastly, we have worked on aerospace harder than anyone who's ever been in the Senate, in the Assembly, <coughs> and hopefully now in Congress. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Having four kids, education is near and dear to my heart. So one of the things I want to do, definitely focus on education here in the Santa Cruz Valley. I can tell you a personal story that I have a daughter, and she wasn't able to get the services she needs here in the Valley because the, the federal government is not fully funding uh, special special education. That's one of the things from the get-go. Uh, the second thing, uh, I support, although not a federal issue, I support Measure E, and so we can improve and expand College of the Canyons. Uh, I, also, I also think that we need grants for uh, the nonpartisan and, not nonpartisan, I'm sorry, nonprofits and charities that are in the Valley that help students, that help provide uh, care after school, and I will work to do that to make sure that every student has a great environment to learn, uh, whether that's at school or after school. Thank you. Jenna, your question. Um, candidates, welcome tonight. Uh, you all addressed small business a little bit. Could you be a little more specific?